Another example of a gyro killing a plane. Now, when I say that, I really mean the pilot misconfigured something and the gyro took over and made the plane uncontrollable, crashed it in the ground. In this case, the pilot, all he did was replace a servo. And here we are. So in this video, I'm going to go over how did that happen and some of the things that you need to pay attention to if you have a gyro in a plane and you're doing any kind of servo swap or reconfiguration of servos and things like that. So stick around. Often I hear from new pilots who have had an incident. I checked the control surfaces. They weren't reversed. For sure they weren't. And that probably is the case. But when I ask, did you check the gyro surfaces? They look at me like, what do you mean? So, as I've talked about in several of my videos, right? So, you please always check the control surfaces, make sure they're going the right way, making sure your servos are working properly. But also checking the gyro that that is controlling your controls, your, your control surfaces in the right direction. That's where people run into problems. So what that means is when you turn it on, and let's say in self-level mode, so the control surface will stay fixed position, I can tilt that right wing up and the right aileron goes up. Left wing up, left aileron, tilt the tail up, elevator goes up, tilt the tail down, goes down, so on and so forth. Checking those control surfaces from a gyro's perspective, super important. Another thing, and I highly encourage you to do this, put your gyro on a switch, a three position switch. If you like to fly with safe and AS3X or stabilization and optimize or how, whatever the terminology is, have a position on there that has nothing. So in the unlikely event the gyro fails, in the unlikely event that the cheap double stick tape that sometimes they use comes unloose in the cold, that your gyro is not flopping around because that's going to be a problem. Want to be able to turn that off. If you dial then too high of gains and you're oscillating like crazy, flip it off. You have some options there. Without that, you're probably going into the dirt and using a tube of foam tack to fix your plane. So next, I'm going to cover a bunch of different gyros, the pros and cons and how they, they work and how you need to be careful on some of them if you're using them on a non-manufactured plane, like an FMS Reflex V2 on a free wing. Eh, you're gonna run into trouble. Stay tuned. So now let's talk about the different types of gyros out there. The only one that I don't have on the board here is the Arrows Vector. But it applies to, the Arrows Vector is similar to, let's say the Reflex uh, V2. And let me go into that. And what that means is these are set up specifically for the manufacturer's airplanes. So I can change this from an FMS Corsair to an FMS Mustang or an FMS um, Piper or whatever it might be, a Ranger. I can change that by plugging this into my computer and using an app to change that. What I cannot change is the direction of the servos. Okay, so these are set up, just like the vector, arrows vector, for specific airplanes. So unless your other, you want to put this in a, you know, a free wing, whatever, if those servos aren't going in the exact same direction that the manufacturer's plane does, you're going to have reverse servos in the gyro. So that is with the vector and this Reflex V2. Now, FMS decided, let's go this route, which is the V3. The V3 allows you to put this in any FMS plane, but also you can put this in an other plane a free wing or, or e-flight or hobby zone, does, doesn't matter. You can put this in whatever because it has an other plane option and an ability to reverse the servos. So, something important to note there. The rest of these, these obviously are two receivers that have the capabilities. You could put these in any plane you want. 
But here's where things get tricky and people don't recognize this, you know, with, with all of this, is that if you change the servos, if you make changes to the direction of your servo arm or how that's working, you need to go in and validate that your gyro is working in the right direction. With Spectrum, you go into forward programming and relearn the servos. Simple to do. You should do that after you get the plane trim. Relearn, basically there's a relearn function and it goes through and looks at the trim, it looks at the throws, it looks at all of that stuff and makes this into a better gyro experience for you. On the Lemon, it doesn't have those kind of capabilities, but it has the capabilities of making sure that the servos are going in the right direction. You can reverse those servos with this as well as with the Hobby Eagle. So you, these are kind of made for whatever plane you want to put in, it'll work fine. Where this one I could throw in there as well because you can put that in any plane. This and the vector, you got to be careful. And so I'm going to go through real quick on this one and, you know, on, <clears throat> on the reflex, just examples of how you'll go through and make sure things are going right. And by all means, please double check that your gyro is going in the right direction, not just moving your stick left, right, up, down. It's not on your transmitter. It's in your gyro that is causing the problem. So let me go through how you do some of those things on the spectrum, and then I'll also talk about the reflex. Stick around. Okay, let's say this to scenario. I have my FMS Cessna 182. It has a spectrum receiver in it. I just had to do a repair and fix a servo. Replace it with an aftermarket servo and noticed the elevator is reversed. Dang it. Well, I can go through in here and change my servo setup, right? Go through, go through, reverse, reverse that elevator. And then after I do that, I need to go into forward programming, go into gyro settings, go into system setup, and relearn servo settings. Click that, stand by, apply, complete. There we go. Now the gyro knows the correct direction of the servo. Now still, I'm still gonna do a, a gyro test. I'm gonna still put, turn it on, AS3X mode, stability mode, stability mode's best, if, if that's how you have it set up on safe mode, and move the wings back and forth, move the elevator or the, the tail up and down, left to right, and make sure everything is going in the right direction. Just a quick tip on that Say, one. Say, connect now. It finds this one, I've already used this, and I've already renamed it, but just to go through that process. If you wanted to change this plane, if we went into switch planes and scroll down to the bottom where it says other planes, you would click other plane. Shows you the orientation. If you hit synchronize data, it's going to make that change. Uh, we're not going to do that because I've already done a few things, but if you hit that synchronize, then that is set up now for the defaults of that gyro for other planes, which means you're still going to have to make changes to the direction of the servos as far as how the gyro works. So here you can see, hopefully the camera is picking this up, um, you can see aileron positive and negative. So as you're moving this plane in, make sure it's in that stability mode so they move quite, quite a great distance if you want. Anyway, it's easy to tell, right? So that aileron is up. Uh, which it should be in that mode. Uh, if I look at the tail section, I'm going to lift it up. It's hard to show on the camera, but that tail section is up. If they weren't, let's say, if I moved that wingtip up and it wasn't in the right orientation, I would hit positive. Change that. So the top one's for aileron. Next one's for elevator. Next one is for rudder. They don't say specifically elevator and rudder. It's gyroscope lifting and lowering positive and negative. And gyroscope direction. That's just the terminology. 
it's either going to be negative or positive. Test your plane. Ability mode test. How do you know when looking at your plane what gyro setting you have? Easy way to do it is when you get it all spun up, the reflex system, at least when it's all spun up and you're holding your plane and if you move the wing, you'll notice the aileron is up and it's staying up. You'll notice if I pitch the uh, tail back and forth, you'll kind of see the rudder moving quite a bit. Elevator, the same thing. If I point down, the elevator is making the plane go up. All right, I hope you learned something. I hope we can reduce the amount of airplane crashes that we have. Otherwise, it's, you know, for me, it's good build videos. However, I really hate to see it. So I hope you got something out of the video. If you have a question, shoot me a comment. More than happy to help out. Have a great day. Thanks.